Today, we're talking about Morton's neuroma. So right here, in between your third and your fourth toe, it's a nerve that gets thick, swollen, sharp, shooting, radiating pain that feels like a pebble or your socks bunched up. We're gonna give you the absolute best exercises. Should an injection be done? The absolute best orthotics the absolute best shoes to wear so that you can get through your work shit. We're gonna give it all to you and we're coming right now. And make sure you watch this video all the way through because at the end, the best treatments are really what will solve this problem for you. And we promise that these will help. So a Morton's neuroma is on the bottom of your foot. So you can see between your third and fourth toe, although it can happen between the first and second, second or third, and other places, but the third and fourth toes are the most common. It feels sometimes like your socks bunched up, and what happens is it can feel like a lump, and sometimes it spasms at random times, and it could be red, it could be achy. It feels like the whole ball of your foot is just aching and throbbing. That's a Morton's neuroma. So it can overlap with a condition called metatarsalgia. If it, the ball of your foot hurts, but it doesn't feel like nerve pain, this is our ultimate metatarsalgia guide. The causes are too much ball of the foot pressure. We see it usually in people who wear heeled shoes, who do repetitive actions. So athletes jumping up and down, ballerinas, nurses, teachers, factory workers, people on hard floors. If you have bunions, if you have hammer toes, the front of your foot will put more pressure on that neuroma site. If you have a tight ankle, tight hamstring, tight lower back, there will be more pressure on the ball of this foot right here. If you play tennis, racket sports, if you're a runner, these are people that get Morton's neuromas. Symptoms are numbness, tingling, burning, deep aching pain. So here are tests that we can do. So if you grab the front of your foot and squeeze it together from side to side, and at the same time grab in between here and try and move up and down between your third metatarsal phalangeal joints, that's when you feel a clicking or a pop or it gets really sore. That's called a Mulder's click test. A Sullivan sign is, this is a Sullivan sign. The nerve comes in between the third and the fourth toes. If the toes are spread like this, that's a Sullivan sign. But if I grab the front right here and squeeze it together, see how the bones are all squeezing together? And you pop between that third and fourth toe right there, that's a Mulder's click test. So those two tests tell you whether you have it or not, but they're not 100%. How do you diagnose a Morton's neuroma? You gotta go to your podiatrist, number one. We do a physical exam, we see a lot of these. Sometimes it's very apparent, but if you have all those predisposing factors, you're putting a lot of pressure on the foot. We get an x-ray. On x-ray, you can usually see between the toes here, there's a lot of widening, and that's when you can see the nerve. Sometimes we have to get an MRI, and especially if you do need surgery, the MRI can help plan for that, or even an ultrasound. In the office, I personally love doing ultrasounds. I do a lot of ultrasounds, injection therapy. So I went over a meta-analysis in my other video, but the number one most proven and happiest treatment is to perform an injection. And an injection works really well because the injection, number one, tells you right away whether that's what you have. So if the injection makes the pain go away right away, very likely it's a Morton's neuroma. But if the pain does not improve at all after an injection, it's probably not a Morton's neuroma. Not only that, but studies do show that with an injection with a little bit of steroid and anesthetic, people had the greatest results for the longest period of time out of all the studies that these research papers look back on. So while steroid injections can be controversial, realistically it's not a lot of medication and you get a lot of relief. But where steroids are bad is if that's the only thing you do. What you need to do is you have to correct all the bad stuff. So if you're a woman in high heels, if you're someone who's doing a lot of repetitive force on the front of your foot, like a court runner, uh, like a tennis player, a racquetball player, a jogger, you might have to take a little bit of time off and cross train. So biking, swimming, uh, weightlifting, this is an injury that will get worse. This is not a recommendation. Realistically, a Morton's neuroma 
can get worse. Mike Trout, the baseball player, he had to give up on his MVP caliber season for this disease. This is a big deal. Icing and anti-inflammatories. Ice works really well as well. It can cool down inflammation. Anti-inflammatories work well. I'm not a huge fan of taking pills because of the side effects. They can cause some problems for sure. We're not gonna include the exercise in this video, but click above. We're gonna go over our top five exercises for Morton's Neuroma. They're not perfect, but they can cool down the inflammation and get you feeling better. So top five exercise for Morton's Neuroma. So the next thing is you want an orthotic. You can see this one has a lump right here. This is a pretty cost-effective orthotic with a lump right here. But what you also wanna do is, see this pad right here? You wanna put a pad right there. I personally like to put the pads on the bottom right here. So it creates almost like a cliff type effect where the toes go. So the idea is the toe pressure is here and you wanna put a lump right underneath here. Now at home, you can do it yourself. You can take a little bit of toilet paper right down here with duct tape. So you can see where it's indenting right here. I just put the pad or a little bit of toilet paper right here and create a lump so that the pressure area hangs over the edge. Realistically though, in the show notes, you can get some orthotics that do this for a pretty cost-effective price under 40 bucks. So something that holds together a little bit better. This is where custom orthotics really come in handy. I have an orthotics video where you don't always need custom orthotics. Custom orthotics can help a lot for um, Morton's Neuroma because you can build something called a metatarsal bar right here that creates pressure and takes it off the front of the foot. So if you put a bar in this area, you could see the front right here, there's a lot less pressure on it. So the next thing you want too is you want a pair of shoes right here with something called heel drop. So these shoes, you could see there's a lot of foam in the middle and in the heel. The heel and the midfoot are actually eight millimeters higher than the front in this shoe. And you could see the toe spring right here actually lets you roll across, when, when it's walking, it lets you roll across rather than jamming into the front. So you want a lot of foam in the middle, a lot of foam in the back. So we have a shoe guide at the bottom right here, but basically you want a stiff back, and you want a stiff sole, you want a little bit of a flexible front. There's a lot of great running shoes like Brooks um, out there that really create a great heel drop. Hoka shoes can be very effective in this regard, even though they're very, sometimes too well cushioned. Right now, I'm gonna show you something absolutely crazy. I'm gonna show you the ultimate guide to pretty much guarantee no Morton's Neuroma or Metatarsalgia pain. If you get yourself a boot, an orthotic, and a super thick sock and a compression sock, it will pretty much calm down any type of flare up in the ball of your foot. So you can see here, I'm putting on a compression sock and I'm gonna put on a pretty thick winter sock just to keep it nice and cushioned here. And I have an orthotic in that boot with a metatarsal pad. So, oh, there's the orthotic, I hadn't put it in yet. So keeping pressure off that, that's gonna stop your ankle from flexing into the ball of your foot. The orthotic will keep pressure off there. You can walk around and you're weightless and even the most severe, and this is only for severe cases, as you can tell, it will get better. Here's some products. You can get a pad like this and this can take pressure off your orthotics. You can see, you put it in the right spot, that's gonna take pressure off there. But realistically, you might as well just spend a couple bucks more and get something like this. Although I still don't recommend wearing something like this because this gets sweaty, this falls apart. Realistically, just get something like this. You can see uh, it's like 25 bucks, great reviews. Right there, you can see there's a metatarsal pad. That metatarsal pad will take some pressure off there. You could combine that with one of those felt pads. That'll work really well for sure. And then here's the big one is a shoe with a heel drop so you can see this is a huge midsole right here but this is a great shoe right here if you watch some uh, other youtube videos of runners there's a lot of people advocating for a shoe like this this is the hoka shoe this is a super cushioned shoe but if you're suffering this is a great shoe to go with for sure so click on the links about how to fit some of these uh, down in the show notes and these may work well for you
Another thing you want to do is cross train. So if you're playing racket sports, if you're on hard surfaces, if you're a runner pounding the pavement, you have to take some time off do some swimming, ride a bike, cross train, do a lot of alternative exercise. You can get in an amazing shape without having to stop doing the activities you want to do.